We begin tonight with another historic and unprecedented move. Governor Jay Inslee is ordering a temporary shutdown of bars, restaurants, and entertainment facilities throughout the entire state in an effort to combat the spread of coronavirus. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm David Rose. I'm Eliana Gomez. This goes into effect tomorrow. Now, there are some exceptions to this. Grocery stores and pharmacies will stay open. Restaurants may continue takeout and delivery service. And retail outlets can stay open. Also, all gatherings of more than 50 people are prohibited. Now, Governor Inslee says since King County is the hotbed of the coronavirus outbreak in the state, these measures will take effect immediately. In a news release, Governor Inslee says these types of decisions are difficult but necessary to slow the spread of the disease and is looking for ways to address the economic challenges that people may face because of this emergency proclamation. Social distancing is now the new norm, at least for the next several weeks. Families are changing up their routines and kids are learning to have no contact with their friends. Tonight, Q13's teens, Jennifer Lee shows us how we're all coping with these very strange times. A spin on the merry-go-round. Reagan is in kindergarten and says coronavirus is changing their life. We're probably not gonna go to Disneyland. I'm probably not going my favorite airline and my um, and a cruise that we booked. Reagan's mom says play dates are only outside and talks at home have been all about social distancing. And honestly, it's kind of heartbreaking telling them, you know, you can't hold your friend's hands. We're not high fiving right now. We're not hugging. And most of society is also taking the cue to be shutting in. Parking lots are empty. Movie theaters are quiet. We're at University Village, and this place is usually lined with vehicles trying to get into the shopping center, crawling with people who are trying to enter shops and restaurants. But look at this. It's relatively quiet during what is peak dinner time hours on a Sunday night. Parks like Green Lake are one of few places buzzing around Seattle. It is really weird. I've been working from home for a week now. Um, I miss my colleagues. <laughs> and starting Monday, Reagan will be home with schools in Washington closing through April 24th. Well, I have a goals chart and I'm trying to get it to 15 by Wednesday and a lot of them are on 7 because I, I had to be on 7 by Sunday in the morning. So um, I'm working on it. In Seattle, Jennifer Lee, Q13 News. Coming up on Q13 News at 10, we'll hear from a restaurant server who doesn't know when she'll be back to work. There are new recommendations from the CDC over large events and mass gatherings to prevent the spread of COVID-19. It's recommending for the next eight weeks, organizers cancel or postpone in-person events that consist of 50 people or more throughout the U.S. Examples include conferences, festivals, parades, sporting events, weddings, and other types of assemblies. The recommendation does not apply to the day-to-day -day operation of organizations like schools, institutes of higher learning, or businesses. Vice President Mike Pence says the federal government will have updated guidelines and recommendations out tomorrow. And President Trump will be briefing governors in all 50 states in their efforts to expand testing. Uh, following the president's declaration of emergency, uh, the Admiral and our Public Health Service have, have forged a partnership now with FEMA, made possible by that declaration. And they've reached out to all 50 states to create a process that will enable all Americans who need to be tested to go to a community-based testing site outside of usual health care facilities. Testing is available in all 50 states. The FDA has also approved access to over 2,000 labs that have the capabilities for faster testing. And here's a look at the latest numbers from the Washington State Department of Health on coronavirus here in Washington. 42 people have died. Health officials say more than half of those deaths are linked to a nursing home in Kirkland. And there are over 700 confirmed cases of the virus. And out of more than 10,000 tests, just over 9,400 of those were negative. The Seattle Sounders have announced their first case of COVID-19 within the organization. A member of the support staff has tested positive, is following the isolation protocol. Sounders released a statement saying, in part, quote, there is not... There is not felt to be a risk to any fans that attended our March 7th match at CenturyLink Field. The individual that tested positive for COVID-19 did not have access to the public on match day. Unfortunately, we have no other confirmed cases within the club at this time. So coming up tonight on Cute Up Sports, Sports Director Aaron Levine will have more on the coronavirus impact on other organizations like the NFL and the upcoming draft. 
A clinical trial for the coronavirus vaccine will start tomorrow right here in Seattle, according to government officials. Now, the National Institutes of Health is funding this trial. It's taking place at the Kaiser Permanente Washington Health Research Institute. Public health officials say it will take anywhere from a year to 18 months to fully validate any potential vaccine. Many parents are in panic trying to figure out what they're going to do with their kids during the closure of all schools in the state. That starts on Tuesday, will last through April 24th. The governor's order applies to all K-12 through schools, private and public. College and technical schools will close as well, moving classes online. Each district will have child care options available at schools, but social distancing measures will be in place. And we talked with one parent who homeschools her 11-year-old daughter, and now her experience is something that all parents can tap into. One learning site she recommends is KanaAcademy.org. The nonprofit says their mission is to provide a free world-class education. Another resource is GreatSchools.org, where you can print out worksheets for specific grades. Some advice to parents is to make up a schedule with your child. At least a loose schedule, saying, okay, we're going to have school learning time from 9 to 12 every day, and then you have free time the rest of the day, or figure out what works best for your family. Well, a major question people have during these school closures, how are students who rely on meals from their schools going to be fed? Well, Seattle Public Schools has a solution for that. Grab-and-go meals will be available for their students at different pickup sites, and these meals will be free of charge. The district is asking students not to eat their meals at the school due to the potential spreading of illness. And for the full list of locations and directions, head to our website, q13fox.com. And Tacoma Public Schools also has a meal plan for kids during this time. It's offering free meals to all students affected by the emergency school closures starting tomorrow. You can pick up meals at middle school buildings throughout the district. And meals will be served between 10 a.m. and noon. The district is telling parents to enter through the school bus loading zone. Of course, if you, have a, if you know a student that doesn't have a means of transportation, please help out in your community. Some good news to report tonight. Fire Station 21 in Kirkland is officially back in service. The Forbes Creek Fire Station was closed for deep cleaning, but is now open and fully staffed. Also, all of the firefighters that were quarantined at Station 21 have tested negative for COVID-19. Right now, the city of Kirkland has 12 firefighters in home quarantine, while 30 others have been released from their recommended quarantine period. Seattle Municipal Court says it will be closed all week because of a confirmed case of the virus. According to a news release, an employee tested positive. That worker has not been at the courthouse since March 6th. People who came in contact with that person are being notified and told to self-quarantine for 14 days. The court will open again with limited operations starting on Monday, March 23rd. Well, this should probably go without saying. Stop overstocking on essential products that protect against the virus. That's the message from the Washington State Department of Health. We're talking about hand sanitizer, disinfecting wipes, toilet paper, and plastic gloves. Listen up, the health department says the more you buy for yourself, the more harm you're causing to your community. Sick neighbors, doctors, emergency responders, the list goes on. We all want to stay healthy, but if sick people can't buy those essentials, then the spread continues. And stick to your normal pace of grocery shopping is also part of their message, and that message also echoed by President Trump. You don't have to buy so much. Take it easy. Just relax. People are going in, and they're buying more. They, I remember, uh, I guess, during the conversation, Doug of Walmart said that they're buying more than they buy at Christmas. Relax. Health officials say the best way to stop the spread is by distancing yourself from others. Stay home if you're sick, and of course, wash your hands. Now at 10, it is an announcement that will reverberate around the state, trying to limit the spread of the coronavirus. Restaurants, bars, and other venues are being shut down until March 31st. You're watching King 5 News. Well, Governor Jay Inslee will be taking a new and drastic step to curb the transmission of the coronavirus. Tomorrow, he will be signing a statewide emergency order to temporarily shut down restaurants and bars, among other establishments. King 5's Britt Moore joins us live in Seattle with details. Britt. Vanessa, it's important to point out that takeout and delivery services will still be allowed. In-person dining will not. Also a part of the governor's new order starting tomorrow. Any gatherings with 50 people or more will not be allowed. This is all just uh, another move, another action to help slow the spread of coronavirus. 
It's the last night until we hear any anything further. Last call at Sam's Tavern in Capitol Hill tonight. The owners of the bar were faced with the difficult decision to shut down temporarily to protect their customers and staff. Obviously, it's going to be hard for all the staff and um, it's just a hard time. That decision came before Governor Jake Inslee's expected statewide shutdown of restaurants, bars, entertainment facilities and gyms beginning Monday. I never saw this coming really. I mean, this is how we make our money is is um, staying open and and having customers. Restaurant workers are banding together during uncertain times. We don't know if it's going to be they're going to be closed for like two weeks, three weeks, two months. Nicole Feitch and Alex and Naya were supporting Sam's Tavern on its last night. They work at Paquito's Mexican restaurant down the street. Laid off a bunch of people. Yeah, they recently laid off, I'd say probably half of our staff. Half of our staff, yeah. A tough road ahead for an entire industry trying to do its part to slow the spread of coronavirus. It's a crazy time to be alive. Yeah, keep in mind that a part of the governor's new order, grocery stores and pharmacies are not impacted by this, so that's important to point out. Meanwhile, we know staff at Sam's Tavern and other restaurants and bars across the city are now scrambling to figure out how they can stay afloat during this mandated closure. For now, we are live in Seattle tonight. Britt Moore, King 5 News. It's a tough time for a lot of industries, Britt. Thank you. Well, tonight's developments come after learning that the state now has 769 confirmed coronavirus cases. The death toll increased to 42 people in Washington. Evergreen Health confirms that one of its doctors has contracted COVID-19 and is being hospitalized in critical but stable condition. We're told he is an emergency room doctor in his 40s. Evergreen Health in Kirkland has been treating coronavirus cases and now that a doctor has fallen ill, it's really just a reminder of the danger that healthcare workers are facing right now in the middle of this pandemic. NBC asked Harborview doctor Steve Mitchell how the coronavirus has changed life in emergency rooms. Emergency room personnel are used to jumping in and handling things quickly and efficiently. And we've and it's made us have to pause just a bit to say not only uh, how do we do what we do, but how do we do it now in a way that's safe for us because we we, we have to be protective of our healthcare working, working force as this pandemic continues. In addition to the doctor at Evergreen Health, there's a 70-year-old doctor in New Jersey hospitalized right now in critical condition fighting COVID-19. Well, Dr. Mitchell, who you just heard from, says the public is really starting to get the message of when to seek help from your local emergency department. So he says if you have mild symptoms like a fever or mild shortness of breath, to reach out to your doctor or your health care provider over the phone first to come up with a plan of action. However, if your symptoms get worse, like significant breathing difficulties or significant pressure in your chest, or if you have a condition like heart disease, emphysema, and you are struggling and not getting better, that is when you call 911. I want to keep space available for the people who are really sick because, because as people get sick from coronavirus, uh, there will be demands on the healthcare system and on, on our hospital and our, we're experiencing that in our emergency department right now. And so it's really keeping space available for the people who really need our services. Dr. Mitchell says for the most part, people with a fever and mild symptoms do well isolating themselves and recovering at home. Now in a new phase of testing, we will have 1.9 million of these high throughput tests available this week. The president's coronavirus task force promised to get more tests out this week as Washington and other states are scrambling right now to get people tested. There are at least 3,200 confirmed cases in the United States. Well, social distancing means a new normal for many across our state and the nation, but for some, it also means pretty tough decisions. I'm the main source of income, and so but we're talking about life or death. So that was Marcus McLucas. His wife, Jennifer, is a cancer survivor and is self-quarantining. Worried that he would get her sick, he made the hard choice to quit his job at the Emerald Queen Casino IT department. He says working in close proximity to the public is not worth it. At that point, I realized that, um, that it was just, it was detrimental for me to be at the casino in this time right now with my wife being as sick as she is and a, a seven-year-old daughter at home. That is an incredibly tough choice. For now, his family will remain quarantined, keeping a distance from the virus. 
Farmers markets across Puget Sound are being shut down amid this outbreak. Fremont Sunday market will be closed until April 13th, and other weekend farmers markets like the one in Ballard will not be open this weekend. Although that did not stop some vendors from setting up shop, hoping to catch the few people who were still out and about. We had already harvested almost all of this, and this is only about a half of what we had earlier this morning. So we had over $2,000 of produce that was harvested Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday in, in our cooler. So, and not out, other outlets. This is our main outlet for that particular product. So we still decided to come down, especially after I had lots of contacts from lots of different customers. They were like, hey, where are you? What, how, how do we get your product? Earlier this week, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin suspended all permitted events. The restriction remains in place until at least April 13th. Tourists are just staying away, I think for the most part, just staying away. And uh, I've been, it's, it's been heartening to see how many locals are coming down here just saying, and ostensibly just saying, you know, we're here just to make sure you guys are still going to be here. Another place taking a hit right now, the usually bustling Pike Place Market. Some of the folks working at the shops there told us that they are seeing a lot less foot traffic. Meanwhile, the Space Needle will be closed from now until the end of March. In an announcement, it says it is suspending operations for precautionary reasons because of the coronavirus outbreak. About 1.3 million people visit the Space Needle every year.